Hey everybody, I'm here to introduce the table method for designing functions. Following the design recipe when writing functions often makes writing the actual function much easier. However, the fifth step, actually writing the code, can be difficult at times, even with all the previous steps. Today I'll be showing you a table-based approach to finding how to fill in the template in order to code correct functions. Let's begin with a very simple example. Let's revisit a previous example, designing a function that returns a personalized greeting for a given name. We have followed the design recipe, so we have a signature, a purpose statement, examples, and a template. The table we would like to write takes this basic form. We have the function variables on the left, we have individual data elements from the template in the middle, and then results from the examples on the right. Let's form this table for the greeting template and see how it helps us create this function. Here we have the corresponding table with the examples that we have written before. As you can see, the only data elements that we have within the template is the function variable name itself. Now we know that within our template, we have the variable name that corresponds to the string Paulette in the first example we wrote and the string Jenna in the second example. This name appears in the resulting strings. Notice how the string hello with a comma and a space and the exclamation point appear consistent within the results. Thus, to get the resulting string using the name string, we use string append. And when we use this code with string append in our function, our tests pass. Let's work with a more interesting example. Let's say we were working with a pet structure we defined in the structure template video. A pet has a string, a number, and a boolean. Remember that the template for a structure is based on the data, so we have the following as our template with all the accessor functions. Let's say that we needed to write a function that, given two pets, returns the younger pet. We have followed the design recipe, so we have a signature, purpose, examples, and of course, the template from before. We've defined cat, dog, and horse to be individual pet structures. Using the template and examples, let's make a table to help us write this function. Notice that now, according to the signature, we have two pets as input. We have two function variables and two of each of the data elements within the pet structure. Here is the corresponding table with the data elements from the template and the examples. Notice how we have two function variables, a pet and a pet2, and we have the pet species, the pet age, and the pet indoors elements of both pets. Notice how the examples consistently return the pet with the smaller number that is returned by the a pet age accessor. The result does not rely on the pet species string or the pet indoors boolean, so we can remove these. Now we see that if the first pet's age, a pet, is smaller than the second pet's age, a pet 2, we return the first pet. But if the second pet, pet's age is smaller, we return the second pet. We can compare the pet's ages using the less than inequality. When we add this to our table, we can see clearly when this inequality is true, we return the first pet. If it is false, we return the second pet. We can formalize this idea with an if. If the pet age of the first pet is smaller than the second pet, we return the first pet. Otherwise, we return the second pet. When we put this if statement into our function definition, our tests pass. Writing out all of the elements of the template helps us realize what parts we need to combine in order to come to a solution. If you're ever stuck on how you need to write your function, try the table method. I hope this video helped and until next time.